because I work in intuitive eating, I don't uh, like to encourage any um, strict rules. Um, I don't think we should label foods as good and bad. Uh, so the purpose of explaining some of the foods that may mess with um, your ability to think clearly is more so you can think about um, when you might choose to eat your favorite foods, if those foods are the types of things that might um, just interfere with our, our ability to think and be uh, productive in our working day. Um, so there's no extremes and there's no need to have uh, strict rules. Um, and a bit about not eating and um, food for your gut and happy mood foods. Um, so I can't remember if I put a... Uh, okay, so just before we go any further, so um, to give context on why this would be important in our working day. So I'm sure it's not rocket science that um, food can help us to have a really productive uh, day of being able to think clearly and having stable energy throughout the day and so on or it can be just one of those annoying things in the background that's kind of messing with us being able to uh, focus and then we get frustrated with ourselves and you know we might have parts of our day where we just feel really like flat and um, you know don't know what to do and quite often that's the time when we look to uh, caffeine or sugar or you know something to just kind of pep us up and keep us going whereas actually when you eat um, a reasonable amount of the the foods that help boost your concentration then um, you're going to have a really productive day so let's go forward so the gut brain uh, connection so there's um, a massive amount of nerve cells in our guts and they actually believe that when uh, well it's proven that when we are a fetus that um, after our um, head our, our uh, gut develops and so they, they kind of develop together and so there's all these cells and they're all connected um, you know from our brain to our gut down our spine and what um, might be surprising is that we make most of our serotonin in our gut so when um, you might have experienced low moods or um, depression, anxiety, irritability, then quite often there's a strong link with um, your uh, digestive health. And so when that is a problem, it is quite good to think about if your gut needs some support and what it is that needs uh, to change to make you feel better, you know, as well as uh, whatever's going on in life and self-care and sleep and everything else. Um, so then the, um, that's annoying, that's right in the way. Um, so your moods are not in just in your head. And when you go to the doctors and they kind of make you feel like you're imagining it all, um, which um, I've experienced myself, um, it's, it's not, you know, it is physiological. There are things going on, chemicals and um, neurotransmitters like uh, brain uh, messengers, and that's all going on all the time. So um, moods, as, as well as life and uh, things like, um, I'm not even gonna say the C word, but, um, you know, as well as the situational things going on around us, um, there's all this um, stuff we can't see going on in our body that influences our moods. So foods that mess with the brain. And um, again, I'm not saying you need to never have these things in your life, but it's just about the timing. So things like sugar, um, and I'm talking about, um, you know, higher sugar foods, um, they as you know, interfere with your blood sugar levels and you'll get dips of energy in your day. And for some people, they actually find that, especially if they have um, quite a lot in one go, that it might cause agitation and hyperactivity as well. Um, alcohol, so it's probably no surprise. I'm sure um, most of you don't uh, drink whilst you're trying to work anyway. But um, just thinking about... Um, you know, the day after, if you're going to have a lot of alcohol and then you've got a day where you need to be really clear thinking, then it is going to um, come back to bite you if you have a lot. Um, so just um, moderating it and uh, aiming to have more days off um, alcohol than on is, is helpful. 
um, and it does put a big stress on your immune system. So if you've been through, you know, especially um, holidays or uh, the Christmas period where you've just had a lot of consecutive days of drinking and then you go down with a cold or something, then part of that is to do with the fact that when you drink alcohol, it um, suppresses your immune system. So if you're going to catch something, then that's when you're going to um, go down with it. Um, and then artificial sweeteners. So in food, um, some of the uh, flavorings that they use may be from real foods and some of them are um, extracts from, from foods and some of them are bio-identical or, you know, factory made but some wreak a bit more havoc than others so um, some some of them actually mess with uh, the bacteria in your guts and they um, can um, encourage it to overgrow so you can end up with bloating and gas and um, you know all sorts of uncomfortable uh, sensations maybe constipation diarrhea um, but they can also cause agitation and interfere with sleep. So examples would be aspartame and acesulfame K especially. And you'll find these in things like um, diet drinks and um, you know, uh, zero fat yogurts where they've actually put sweeteners in or you know, no sugar foods that they've actually put these uh, things in. And what they tend to do is they mimic um, a neurotransmitter in your brain called glutamate and glutamate is excitatory. So that means that it makes you alert and it helps, you know, we need it to um, get us going and um, make us uh, think, um, but we don't wanna to do too much of that and not be able to sleep or relax. So that's where sweeteners can have this um, adverse effect on us. And especially you'll notice that in children um, where they get hyper and, um, you know, especially children with autism spectrum disorders might find that these um, sweeteners will interfere with um, their kind of anxiety levels. Uh, and also there are some sweeteners that are not going to mess so much with your blood sugar and they are likely to be more natural. And these are often, um, they're sugar alcohols. So they tend to end in O-L, -O, so it would be sorbitol, erythritol, xylitol, and these actually, they, they don't interfere too much with blood sugar, but what they can do if you have a lot of it is they can, um, they can have a laxative effect. So when you substitute a lot of those um, sweeteners, so xylitol especially, when you put a lot of that in instead of sugar, you just might find that people get a bit windy or a bit of a runny tummy. Um, so they're okay to have in small amounts, but you wouldn't want to have loads. And then uh, food intolerances. So it can be hard sometimes with food intolerances to recognize that these are, um, the symptoms are a sign of the fact that you're eating things that your body um, can't digest properly or there might be um, something that they're reacting to and there's lots of different types of reactions to foods and sometimes they are temporary so um, if you've had a, a like a tummy bug or you know you've had a really nasty uh, virus sometimes your digestion can get a bit uh, disrupted and so that can take a while to kind of sort itself out. So with food intolerances, one of the effects can be brain fog and also headaches and messing around with your energy and so on. So that's just something to be aware of. If you're eating the same sorts of things and you always feel um, you know, really sleepy afterwards, then it, it could be to do with the particular food or it could be to do with um, digestive enzymes and other things going on but it's always worth um, working those things out and what which foods you're noticing these symptoms afterwards so not eating I'm not a big fan of uh, fasting and I'm not saying that we shouldn't ever fast and sometimes fasting can be 
some, something that is really helpful in certain uh, medical conditions. And some people find that they just naturally don't uh, feel hungry first thing, or they don't um, like to eat after you know six o'clock or whatever it might be and that's fine I think you should always follow what your body likes and if you um, wake up and you're hungry and you're you like to have a late uh, dinner I don't think that's a massive problem unless you're eating really big meals and then not able to sleep but a lot of people under eat and they skip meals or they um, because there's been this big thing about people shouldn't ever snack and um, they'll go long um, long periods between meals and then they'll be really hangry when they do eat and then it's easier to make choices that you wouldn't necessarily make if you weren't that hungry so I would say um, making sure that you're having um, good quality meals that will keep you going hours and especially um you know your breakfast and your lunch but not being too shy of having uh, snacks to hand um if you need them so having protein with them is always a good thing but again um i don't think you should ever get caught up in you know very uh, rigid rules about these things um and so that's eating and then foods for a happy gut. So um, I've just picked a few here because there's loads and um, I hope this gives you some ideas to maybe try out if, if uh, there's anything on here that you don't eat that often or you, you know, would like to give a try. So fermented and cultured foods and there's loads more, um, but um, generally bacteria has, um, been involved in um, you know the food after it's been um, prepared and so I've got some examples here of you know dairy based ones you can get kefir that's um, non-dairy as well you can get coconut kefir water kefir um, cheeses sauerkraut kimchi and kombucha kombucha is something I've discovered fairly recently and it's really good if you're trying to um, you know moderate your alcohol intake and it's very refreshing it's a nice uh, drink for the summer as well and the good thing about kombucha because the first time I looked at a, um, the label on it I was horrified that it was um, there was a lot of sugar in it but actually the sugar has been um, <laughs> fermented by the, the bacteria so actually there isn't really any residual sugar in there um, because it's been uh, converted into something else. So that um, is quite nice to have. And there are some other foods as well. There's, there's plenty of other things you can try. I think uh, tempeh is one. I don't, I don't particularly like it myself. There's miso. Miso is fermented as well, I believe. So there's lots of uh, things to try. And what they do is they introduce um, bacteria to the gut but in most cases they are transient, which means that they pass through. And so they can encourage a balancing of what's actually down there already and help uh, feed the, the bacteria that need to kind of keep the bad ones under control. Um, so that's the idea. They, it used to be thought that they actually um, stick around, but um, they pass through. And prebiotic rich foods are, um, they're all plant-based and they have uh, fibers that we don't digest, but our bacteria love them in our guts. And that encourages um, growth of lots of different types. And the more different types that you can eat, the better because uh, different types of bacteria like different foods. And um, so we, we say that diversity in the diet encourages diversity in the gut. And actually the handout, uh, the, the guide that I've shared a link to has a much longer list of these um, because it, it uh, seems to be that a lot of these are also rich in phytoestrogens as well. So you will find a, a, a more extensive list in, in that guide um, because it's loads. And a lot of them are everyday things. So it's not like you have to, um, shop in Whole Foods and um, buy really obscure, expensive things. 
Um, so polyphenol rich foods, so polyphenols are plant chemicals and they generally have really high amounts of antioxidants in. So they're really good for the gut, but they're also really good for the brain and they're quite often good for the skin as well. And, um, you know, help to protect our body from oxidation, which is, um, you know, a stress on the body. So dark chocolate is my favorite because um, all my clients love it when I say you can eat chocolate, um, but the darker you can comfortably go and not everybody loves dark chocolate, um, but it's full of um, these polyphenols and it's also very mood boosting. So bright colored vegetables as well. And um, I can't read my the rest of my slide because there's a bar across it, but yeah, the, our green tea I think was under there. Um, so there's lots of other um, foods that you can try. Uh, just go for rainbow, rainbow plates where you can. And these uh, gut soothers are for um, if you have a sensitive tummy or you get a lot of bloating or reflux, especially, um, these sorts of foods can really help to encourage healing. And a lot of them have um, things that line the gut. I, I have got banana on there. So they, they tend to kind of um, just line and soothe and um, help to encourage repair. So um, there's a few things you can try there. And of course, um, Denise, we've got aloe, aloe vera on there. Um, and so uh, I recommend these to a lot of clients because generally they can all um, benefit from trying a few of these out. And they um, always say that they enjoy uh, trying them. And of course, I've said it already, variety is um, key for gut health. Um, and then good mood foods. So these are the sorts of things, especially when you're having a day where you're just um, really struggling and you feel a bit flat with energy, that knowing that you've got these um, as an option to try can help just kind of uh, pep you up naturally without a kind of a slump later. So tryptophan is a, um, well, it's there. We need it to make serotonin and melatonin and um, serotonin is our happy hormone and it also encourages um, gut motility which means that it supports helping um, us kind of flush through our food and get rid of toxins so there's um, the animal based foods are the highest in tryptophan but the plant based ones are still very good so there's lots of different options there and my favorite thing um, is nut butter. So if you're not allergic to nuts, it can go on oat cakes. You can just have it on a spoon. You can have it with dates. You can have it with banana. You can have it with, um, I like sliced apple, but um, you can just have it in lots of different ways, add it to your porridge or whatever. And it's just some, you know, one food that can really help to um, get those good, um, amino acids in that you need for um, good quality sleep and if you eat these closer to the evening then they can help to kind of set you up for better sleep as well then healthy fats so we need um, fats even though for a long time um, people were cashing in on the idea that low fat diets were a good idea um, and so our brain is um, mostly made of fat and there are lots of um, ways of getting that in our diet. The oily fish is one of the best ways to get um, high amounts of EPA and DHA um, omega-3. But you can also get an algae-based one now for vegans, which um, is a, a good equivalent. Um, with black soy or chia, uh, chia seeds, and so on. They provide um, ALA um, omega-3, which is still really good for us, but our body um, doesn't kind of convert it in, in the same way as it does EPA and DHA. So we just need more of it to um, get the same benefits. And then you've got lots of other um, types of um, natural fats that are good for you. 
and limiting um, saturated fats and um, anything that's been fried or overheated can help um, to, you know, just because those oils do mess with our um, inflammation and so they are pro-inflammatory. So it's just a case of going for leaner cuts where you can, but um, not having a strict rule on it really, but knowing which are the ones that you would um, benefit from having more of. And then I've put polyphenol rich foods on here again. Um, so coffee, organic coffee is um, another thing that um, is still very high in um, polyphenols. So I know some people are very anti-coffee. I think if you like it, have it, but go for quality. Um, and green tea, of course. And that's everything, I believe. So thank you all for listening. Has anybody got any questions? I'll stop sharing. <laughs>